Tonight, from Ontario, California, Lever Brothers Company presents The Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and his special guest, Van Johnson. Gentlemen, this is Bob broadcasting from Ontario, California, for the Ontario Youth Fund and the California Chamber of Commerce Hope, telling you that if you use Pepsodent, you make no mistake, everything will be Jake and your teeth will never be fake, because they won't break or even shake during the next earthquake. <laughs> there wasn't anything about the earthquake in the Los Angeles papers, except that in one of them it jolted Dick Tracy so hard he caught hypo three months before he was supposed to. <laughs> And really, the Los Angeles papers are very honest and truthful, and they all had the earthquake in the headlines. It said, Severe Florida Explosion Felt Here. <laughs> it didn't bother me. I thought Sinatra dropped one of his muscles. <laughs> Either that or Crosby dropped his wallet, but I do want to... Crosby was in Pittsburgh today for the opening, uh, the Pirates opening game. Cleveland opened, I mean, their season opens tomorrow. You know, the baseball, the, be the baseball season opened today, and last night I had the craziest nightmare about it. I dreamt Happy Chandler was throwing out the first ball in Brooklyn. <laughs> what a tough break for a guy like DeRocher, wasting a whole year when he doesn't even like to waste a day. <laughs> I watched the baseball game today in Hollywood with a bag of peanuts in my pocket. Then Dorothy Lamour sat down beside me. I can't tell you what happened, but the rest of the afternoon I was eating peanut butter. <laughs> naturally, I, naturally, I had a box, but some fresh kid kept kicking it out from under me. <laughs> and I come from a long line of ball players. In fact, I was my father's first heir. I, uh... <laughs> I, made, I made another heir today. I came down to Ontario by bus with the members of the band. Someone opened a window and let some fresh air in, and four of Desi's musicians had to be given artificial respiration. <laughs> I, I had to come up here by bus. My brother, my brother borrowed my car yesterday to go to the bank, and he may be gone for 10 or 20 years. <laughs> a bus, that's a cross between an automobile and a train. The, way, the one we had looked like they both got to the crossing at the same time. <laughs> Desi's orchestra didn't have regular tickets. Every 15 minutes, the driver would come back and punch their tamales. <laughs> and, and those reclining seats on the bus are really something. I pressed the button, and my head went back so far, a woman behind me who was feeding her baby wiped my chin off and burped me before discovering... <laughs> Me who was feeding her baby wiped my chin off and burnt me before discovering she put the pablum in the wrong mouth. <laughs> My, you're fast here. <laughs> what a bus trip. And we almost had a big accident. Two big trailer trucks passed us on both sides at the same time. I won't say what happened, but we sat single file the rest of the way. I read the same billboard three times before I realized it was hanging on the radiator. <laughs> and Desi Arnaz's musicians opened a bottle of that Mexican tequila and passed it around, and it really made the trip interesting. They arrived in Ontario before the bus did. <laughs> Jingles into day, E I E I O, and with a brand new Chevrolet, E I E I O. There's a Chevrolet here, a fridge there, a Chevrolet there, here a prize, there a prize, everywhere a prize, prize for Chevrolets every seven days. E I E I O. What a haul! What a haul for those second week's winners: Chevrolets, Frigidaire, coal walls, and the hundred dollar bills. We'll announce the names later tonight on four more people who've won brand new Chevrolets and Pepsodent's exciting contest. Yes, folks, to celebrate the release of Bob's new picture, My Favorite Brunette, Pepsodent's giving away four Chevrolets every seven days. If you want to win, hurry. Our fourth week's contest closes next Saturday, midnight, April 19th. 
again this week as grand first prizes, four Chevrolets, brand new Fleetmaster, four-door sedans. Next eight prizes, new Frigidaire cold walls, big seven cubic foot refrigerators. Next ten prizes, crisp new $100 bills. Enter tonight. Here's all you do. Just finish a simple two-line jingle, starting with the words, My Favorite Brunette. Finish your two-line jingle so the last word of both lines rhymes. Write about anyone, your husband, wife, friends, even your dog. As simply as this. My favorite brunette is a guy named Joe. I married the man because I love him so. Mail your jingle with a top and bottom of any Pepsodent carton or toothbrush label. Mail to Pepsodent, Box 3636, Chicago, Illinois. That's Pepsodent, Box 3636, Chicago, Illinois. Complete rules given later in the program. Also in Sunday papers and at drug counters. Send your entry before next Saturday, midnight. Pepsodent's giving away four Chevrolets every seven days. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our guest singer of the evening, a British gal who really knows how to handle an American tune. We welcome back Miss Beryl Davis. Yes, it's a good day. How could anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day for shining your shoes. And it's a good day for losing the blues. Everything to gain and nothing to lose. Cause it's a good day from morning till night. I said to the sun, good morning, sun. Rise and shine today. Curing your ills, so take a deep breath and throw away your pills, cause it's a good day from morning till night. I said to the sun, Good morning, sun, rise and shine today. You know you gotta get going if you're gonna make a show, and you know you got the right of way. Cause it's a good day for paying your bills, and it's a good day for curing. So take a deep breath and throw away your pills Cause it's a good day from morning till night Say it's a good day Very nice, don't anybody inhale, very, very nice that was It's a Good Day, sung by Beryl Davis with the assistance of Spike Arnaz and his Oliver Street Slickers. <laughs> right there. I just read it, don't <laughs> You know, you, you did that song very beautifully, Beryl. In fact, it's the first time I ever saw a song in an audience rendered at the same time. <laughs> Seriously, Beryl, um, this is Ontario, you know. How about driving back? Would you like a little date tonight? Well, sorry, Bob. I'm going out with Desi. He's taking me to Romanoff. Well, I'll take you to Romanoff. Well, that's very nice of you, Bob, but... Desi's going to take me inside. <laughs> well, you must get a much smaller check if you stay outside, you know. Well, anyway, Bob, I wouldn't want to get you in trouble. And Desi said that if I ever had a date with you, he'd fire you. <laughs> oh, really? That's the kind of routine he uses, huh? He'd fire me. He's getting so vicious lately. They must be putting Red Heart in his tamales. You know that? <laughs> but stick around, Beryl. Professor Colonna went to Metro Goldwyn Mayor Studios to get our guest star, Van Johnson, and they should be here. At... Turn off that alarm clock. Well, oh, the phone. I'd forgotten what it sounds like. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, just a moment, Mr. Hope. The party calling you will have to deposit five cents. Very well. Five cents. Here you are. Colonna, what's all that noise? <laughs> Buffalo Nickel, our drugstore. <laughs> well, 
Kelowna, I don't understand. How can you make a long-distance call while the strike is on? I'm wearing a union suit. <laughs> that's ridiculous. How does wearing a union suit give you the right to call long-distance? This is an emergency. That's all I'm wearing. I thought I told you to go to MGM and get Van Johnson. Well, I'm at MGM now, Hope. In fact, I just ran into my friend, Joe Schlunk, the midget. Joe Schlunk, the midget at MGM? What's he do there? Well, you know when you see an MGM picture, how it starts out with Leo the lion roaring? Yes. Well, Joe's the little guy behind the screen, twisting Leo's tail. <laughs> so you're at MGM, <laughs> Where are you? On the set? Come again, Hope. Set, set, set. You set it. You laid it. <laughs> Listen, Cologne, I told you to find Van Johnson. Did you look in his dressing room? Yes, Hope. The door was locked, but I looked all around the room and Van wasn't there. That's ridiculous, Cologne. How could you possibly look all around the dressing room if the door was locked? Short keyhole, long eyeballs. <laughs> Kelowna, I suspect you have... Tell me one thing. Whatever happened to your IQ? I sold it uh, to some doctor for a box of Snickers. <laughs> what, uh... What did you get for yours? <laughs> I suspect you haven't even tried to find Van Johnson. Of course I've tried, Hope. I've been in Lana Turner's dressing room, Rhea Goss's dressing room, Catherine Hepburn's dressing room, Judy Garland's dressing room. But, Kelowna, did you ask him where Van is? I don't ask questions. I just have fun. <laughs> You'll never find Van Johnson. Forget about it and come on out here. Okay, but before I leave, I think I'll go over and look at the set here. What picture are they making? The beginning of the end. And the atomic bomb is still here. Kelowna, that picture's been made, but stay away from that bomb anyway. It might be dangerous. Oh, don't be silly, Hope. It's just a movie prop, some cardboard and glue. <laughs> Kelowna! Kelowna, what happened? Uh, MGM pictures can now be seen everywhere. <laughs> That's you. That's you, Professor Colonna. What a guy he is. But I don't mind if he's silly. He just makes the beautiful things on this show seem more beautiful. Hello, Mr. Hall. Well, Miss Vera May. Yes, <laughs> Miss Vera May. Our budding wallflower. Uh, well, well, Mr. Hope, our blooming idiot. <laughs> Steady, Miss Vega. I have a surprise for you. Van Johnson's going to be on the program tonight. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Van Johnson! No. Oh, I'm just dying to meet him, Mr. Hope. Where is he? Come on, tell me, tell me, tell me, Take tell me. Take it easy, Miss Vega. Someone's been spiking your oval team. Steady. <laughs> Miss Vague, I hope you'll control yourself and do your best to make a good impression on Van. Oh, I certainly will. Oh, I'd love to be Van's girlfriend. But, Miss Vague, you're old enough to be his mother. All right, so I'll make the best deal I can. <laughs> you just don't understand, Mr. Hope. Confidentially, Van Johnson is my secret, double-edged, dreamy, beamy, favorite <laughs> movie star. Really? So you've finally given up on Francis X. Bushman, huh? <laughs> Mr. Hope, why don't you donate your head to Frank Sinatra? I hear he's looking for a new punching bag. I don't understand why you're so excited about Van, Miss Vague. I'm here every week, and after all, take away Van's freckles, and what have you got? I don't know, Mr. Hope, but whatever it is, see if you can get some of it. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. If anyone knew what it was, Thrifty would have had it in bottles a long time ago. Oh, we've got the owl and thrifty. All we need is Rexall and we're clean. <laughs> oh, my, what a night this is for me. Meeting Van Johnson. Oh, Mr. Hope, you know, every night I go to sleep and dream about Van. Oh, well, I didn't know. No wonder you're anxious to meet him in person. <laughs> Here's a few things I'd like to ask him about last night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so glad I've been taking golf lessons for my figure. Well, golf should <laughs> certainly help, but playing golf all the time is what put me in the shape I'm in. <laughs> Goodness, where do I go to turn in my club? 
<laughs> no, no, I was just kidding about quitting. Really, I was. I, I, I'm a very serious dolphin, Mr. Hope. You know, yesterday I spent the whole day practicing how to hold a caddy. <laughs> Miss Vague, you don't hold a caddy in golf. Mr. Hope, you play your game and I'll play mine. So you're playing golf, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you the most exciting thing that happened yesterday. (laughs) I met Van Johnson on the course just as I was getting ready to putt. And Van said if I made a par, he'd give me a kiss. Van promised a kiss if you made par? That's right. So I hit the ball in the cup. Well, how many strokes did you have? Just one. But they revived me right away. <laughs> oh, you mean... <laughs> a golf show. Oh, yes, yes sure. Yeah, well, at the end of the first nine holes, the score was 40, love. Miss Vague, love is a scoring term used in tennis. How could your golf score be 40, love? Well, I knock a lot of balls into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can show you how to correct that, Miss Vague. Golf is no fun in the woods. <laughs> What? I say... I say golf is no fun in the woods. <laughs> Do you want to speed up or shall the rest of us slow down? Recording arrangement of Wyoming. Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Cause there's a shadow factor looking for me high and low and low. Give me back my prairie with the cattle and wild game. River hills are nice and clean. Women are the same, where skies are always blue and the cowboy songs are sad. Where money punching cattle and mothers punching dad. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to no. I tied my hand in Cody Wrangling, Coach with Duncan B. When the foreman said that what's the rock, I shook right in my V. I swung up on the saddle, then I raked him with my spurs. The next thing I remember, they were picking out the birds. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Because there's a sheriff back there looking for me high and low and high and low. I and it's a lovely place to see. You can ride along the rolling plains just east of Laramie. And that's the sheriff caught me, and that's why I have to roam. He caught me working in that bank and taking samples home. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave my own? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave my own? Because there's a sheriff back there looking for me. Hi! more people have won brand new Chevrolets, and here they are. New 1947 Chevrolets are on their way to Mrs. Andrew C. Kerr's, 8636-104th Street, Richmond Hill, New York. Lieutenant Louis E. Andre, Department of Training Development, Williamsfield, Arizona, Edward M. Barwis, 4748 Umbria Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Mrs. Ruth George, 3639 Irwin Avenue, New York, New York. Winners of the eight Frigidaires and ten $100 bills in President's second week's contest have already been notified. Our congratulations. And remember, you folks who didn't win, you have plenty more chances this week. Yes, President's giving away four Chevrolets every seven days. Enter now for our fourth weekly contest, closing next Saturday midnight, April 19th. Just finish a two-line jingle, starting with the words, My Favorite Brunette. The last words of both lines must rhyme. For example, my favorite brunette is only three. When she wants her daddy, she calls for me. Write on one side of any piece of paper, mail it with your name and address to Pepsodent, Box 3636. That's Box 3636, Chicago, Illinois. Send as many entries as you wish, each on a separate sheet of paper, and attach to each entry the top and bottom of any Pepsodent carton. 
either a pepsin and toothpaste, tooth powder or antiseptic, or a toothbrush label or facsimile. All these prizes each week. Four brand new Chevrolet Fleetmaster four-door sedans, eight new Frigidaire cold wall refrigerators, ten $100 bills, Entries judged on originality and absence of thought and become property of Pepsin and unreturned. Judges' decisions final, duplicate prizes for ties. Any person in the U.S. territory may enter, except Lever Brothers employees, its advertising agencies, and their families. Act now if you want to win one of the next four Chevrolets. Entries received after next Saturday midnight will be judged in the following week's contest. Listen next Tuesday for the third week Chevrolet winners. Pepsin giving away four Chevrolets every seven days. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a fellow who's got his start as Dr. Kildare's assistant and has been America's leading heart specialist ever since. MGM's charm school with speckles, the man who lives what I dream, Mr. Van Johnson, right here. Thanks for the wonderful introduction, Bob. I certainly appreciate it. Well, you know, Van, you're really a surprise guest now. I didn't tell anyone you were going to be on the program. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, too. <laughs> Say, you don't make many radio appearances, do you, Van? No, I get my fight when I think that millions of people may be listening in. Are you frightened now? No, they told me on this program I wouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> You know, you could easily be replaced by Mickey Rooney in a ladder. You know that, don't you? I hope you know that. Well, Van, what do you think of Ontario? Oh, it's pretty exciting. What crowds of people. Yeah, I was, mo I was mob coming in here by these Chafee boys. Did you see that pretty blonde who threw her arms around me and kissed me? She was really enthusiastic. Yeah, she almost fell off a tricycle. <laughs> well, she tried to get my bubble gum anyway. You know, you're not the only one who gets the shirt torn off his back, Van. I have some pretty wild fans myself. Your fans try to tear your shirt off? No, but last week one of them leaned down and snapped my garter. <laughs> Crosby has worse trouble. His fans keep running up and pulling the stoppers out of his hot water bottle. <laughs> Say, what's your latest picture, Van? I just finished High Barbary. High Barbary? Sounds like Gary Cooper getting a haircut. <laughs> High, High Barbary. That, June Allison's in that. I hear that's very romantic. Tell me more about it. Well, I play the part of a pilot who's been shot down in the Pacific, and I spend most of the picture just sitting on a little rubber lifeboat. I usually do that after the picture. <laughs> you know, Van? You know, Van, a picture of mine has just been released. You're in a new picture? What's it called? This kid must already have a Chevrolet. <laughs> Aren't uh, <your> Jingle happy? <laughs> Bob, I think Paramount to give you more romantic roles. You could be the greatest heartthrob the screen has ever known. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I know. Then why make me say it? <laughs> Van, you know, when I started my career, a lot of my fans wore bobby socks. But how could you tell, Bob? Didn't the high-button shoes cover them? <laughs> Don't be silly. The kind that went for me didn't wear shoes. But I want to tell you... You certainly do have something, Van. I've watched you in your love scenes, and it's amazing the way your leading ladies look up at you. Your face seems to enchant them and fascinate them. Oh, Bob, they aren't enchanted or fascinated. They're just counting the freckles. <laughs> yeah, and I can't see why they're so crazy about them. After all, I could have freckles like you, too, but who wants to take a sun bath with a coffee strainer over his nose? <laughs> Listen, Vanson. I mean, uh, John. John let's. Uh, I mean, uh, Johnson. Uh, you know, uh, you remind me of a kid I used to know back home. But I suppose there's a freckle-faced kid in every neighborhood. Well, that's a funny thing, Bob. You remind me of a farmer boy I met on the bus when I was coming out to the Hollywood for the first time. Is that right? Uh, pardon me. Is this seat taken? No, it's not taken. Sit down. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Better put my rooster in my other pocket. <laughs> You got a rooster in your pocket? Yeah, I'm bringing him to Hollywood. What for? He heard there's a lot of cute chicks out there. <laughs> say, I like you. What's your handle? Yeah, you did what? I say, what's your handle? Don't get funny. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that one. <laughs> hey, I have some sunflower seeds. <laughs> say, <laughs> sunflower seeds? You're pretty sophisticated, aren't you? I've been to Pomona. <laughs> 
You look pretty smart yourself. What do you do? Oh, I'm a bull fiddle player. When I ain't milking cows. You milk cows? Back home, I milk 25 cows a day. Does doing so much milking interfere with your bull fiddle playing? Oh, I can play three choruses of Red River Valley and get a half a pound of coffee cream at the same time. <laughs> What's that? Bessie, I couldn't bear to leave her, so I took her with me. <laughs> you mean you're bringing a cow to Hollywood? It's all right. I bought her some dark glasses. <laughs> Hey, you in show business? Well, I'm musically inclined. A musician, eh? Yeah, I used to play first paper and comb with the North Cucamonga Philharmonic. <laughs> but I had to quit. How come? I couldn't afford to pay dues to Patrillo and the Barber's Union Bull. <laughs> well, maybe we could team up in a double act. First, I'll come on and tell 30 or 40 jokes, and I'll sing a song. Then tell 10 more jokes, play a solo on my fiddle. Then I'll sing another song, and I'll tell 20 more jokes to sing a song. Hey, then... what do I do in the act? Now, listen, kid, this act won't work if you're going to be hammy. Everybody out, Hollywood and Vine. Why do we have to get off here? They're running short of pedestrians. <laughs> Van. Yeah. Here's an agent's office. Gay, 10% for you, Kelowna. Let's go in. What can I do for you? Oh, howdy, ma'am. We want to get into show business. Sorry, but the circus has already signed their freaks for the season. <laughs> oh, that's all right, ma'am. We really don't expect to start at the top like that. Oh, you're kind of cute. <laughs> Hiya, big boy. <laughs> uh, Hezekiah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my family name. What'd you say, um... I said, what do I do now? I'm scared. Well, didn't your pa ever tell you about the birds and the bees? <laughs> yeah, but which one is this? <laughs> Listen, ma'am. I want to get in the movie pictures. I've got ambition. I've got talent. Well, I'd like to help you. You're really cooking. <laughs> well, how about me? Uh, sorry, you're sitting too far back on the stove, shorty. <laughs> Can we see Agent Kelowna? Uh, yes, yes, you can go in now. Oh, howdy, Mr. Kelowna. We sure are mighty pleased to meet you. Yeah, love and happen <laughs> What can I do for you, boys? Well, we want to get into Western pictures. Western pictures, eh? You mean where the hero was riding along his horse, pimpity clop, pimpity clop, and the hero just came home from Basher, and there's a mortgage, she screamed, huh? And the villain says, hey, I forget out. Oh, oh, look at this, look at this. clop, clop, clop. The hero, take that, and that. Oh, bang, bang, bang. Oh, get the hero. They ride away. Clippity clop, clippity clop. Everybody's happy. Ha, 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 ha. Fifteen cents each, please. <laughs> Fifteen cents each from each of us? Why? What do you want, a double feature? <laughs> what do you boys do? We sing and give gay recitations. Yeah, we'll do an audition for you. Ready, Van? Yep. Okay. Heartache. Heartache. My loving you, man, for me. Heartache. <coughs> now they got headaches. <laughs> This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. An important